Okay, here's the second video about um, corporate finance. Now what I'm going to do is put a portfolio analysis in. And in case you uh, don't didn't watch the introduction, well, we're going to put, we're going to evaluate the drivers. We're going to say, okay, we've got an example with different planes. I didn't fix the name depreciation. Oh, well, I'll do it later. Uh, we're going to change assumptions with the value of a plane you buy. Say things get more efficient or less efficient. We're going to put in different growth rates, different lifetimes, uh, different really inflation rates. I don't know the existing planes. Well, we can start with a different portfolio, see how these affect some of these financial ratios. And um, uh, uh, see which of these variables uh, really drives everything uh, more, most. And of course, one of the most important will be the cost of capital. And this is really the way to the uh, pre tax. Okay. And for right now, we'll start with making that. We'll, so this is going to be such a really simple example. And we'll we'll we'll, we'll um, uh, see which of these variables really uh, drives all of this stuff, and hopefully have a little bit of a discussion about it. This. Okay. Now, you know, we'll start with the year, and let's go to. You know, Two hundred years. Okay, that's enough, isn't it? Okay, and that now hopefully my shift control R will work. And the first thing we need to do is put our portfolio of planes. And we'll start with an opening balance as we always do. And then we have to subtract the retirement and then we put new uh, planes okay and uh, then we'll put a closing balance that's the how it'll all start and then once we have that and this is going to be from the 10-year kind of analysis and we can uh, put starting so, you know, let's just, uh, okay, okay, oh, shit, okay, now, the point of this one is really going to show you how a portfolio, some of the funny effects on things like ROE uh, or if this is really ROIC maybe what's what how, how different growth rates when you have all the same kind of single investment it always earns 10% what happens if we just put all of these into a, a portfolio what does the ROI look like if we look, use the straight line depreciation that I discussed here, and what happens if we use the economic depreciation that's theoretically correct, but nobody ever would dream of using. So let's uh, take this and put less than or equal to this. Shift control R. And it, now we after we have the portfolio of planes let's put our plant uh, balance hmm. i think the next thing we should put is a uh, ebitda per plane now this is uh, uh, for now going to be really easy but if we change the uh, if we, we if we change the assumption about the cost of a new plane, the rate of return, this this will change a lot. And 
instead of making some simplistic assumption, we can really see how it's all working. And then we can put just below the cost per plane, we can put the uh, capital invet cap cap per per plane. Okay, and uh, we already agreed that that's this number. I suppose. Okay. Okay, and we'll put that in. Now, once we have those in, we can put the plant balance. And we'll put the opening balance and add the. We'll take away the retirements. And add the new uh, planes. Okay, for the closing balance. And then we need to have a separate one for the accumulated. Okay, and just below this, we can put. Let's put both our uh, straight line depreciation and then we have our okay, and then we've got an opening. Add uh, the the depreciation expense and take away the retirements. And this depreciation that will depend on whether we click our uh, thing here. And this will be a complicated and probably take a second video because when we have the economic depreciation, we're going to have to create a function because our depreciation uh, rates are not the same. There are these, di you know, these, these silly little uh, 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 diagonal things that I think people think is they're fancy and they're just a total other waste of time because uh, you can do it so easy with a function. Um, uh, and then we'll put the net plant and everything will be beginning of period and then we can put our uh, once we have that then we can also compute our uh, EBIT and our return on investment okay and uh, finally once we have our return on investment then we can start looking at all of these uh, ratios so uh, why don't we just get through this in uh, in this one so let's start with just nothing okay so our opening balance in the very first one is going to be the closing balance and our retirements this is going to be the hardest one I, I almost should have put the retirement below but let's say it, if as long, we're, we're not going to have a retirement until we get out of this first period and then we'll use the offset and then here's what I always do wrong. We go down to the planes, keep it on the same row, and put a minus on the, the uh, this one. And we can, uh-oh, if, uh, so this should be instead of, okay, and we can multiply that by one if you can. Now, we have to make sure, so this one's going down and going backwards 10. We have to make sure I didn't miss it by one. I could have, well, missed it by one. I should be able to really explain this. So our new planes, let's just put in one at first so our closing balance is our opening balance plus minus the retirements plus the new planes 
and then put a plus. Shift Control R and oh great. Okay. And I Okay, just a minute. Okay. So we go over here and let's just these are we keep adding our new planes and then we get to ten planes. And this looks really good because we just stay at constant at keep it constant at 10 planes but uh, you know in this we put this plane in here and we went for 10 years and then so we put it at the end of this year and then we take it out at the end of this year so it worked I didn't explain it perhaps very well now let's put the do kind of mirror the same thing in our plant balance and what we can do here is is do almost the same thing put if it's then true then we we take offset and we go out down to the cap x keep it on the same rule put a minus on the year and we can also multiply it by uh, one and then the cap x for the new planes why don't we just take the new planes we have here and multiply that by our cap x just here so our closing balance is the opening balance minus this plus this okay shift control one shift control r okay and eventually it stays constant because we have no inflation no growth this is just uh, the same thing now what I really should have done is multiply this by one plus the the let, let's put the growth rate over here now one of the things I struggle with and I struggle with like I hate it is if we don't start our company from scratch we have to take account of the existing assets which is a very real case and how do you spread the retirements of the existing assets over time? So what I'm going to have to do is, is go through this and kind of uh, see how it works. What that was a ridiculous thing to say. But. So we'll go. We'll divide this by the uh, ten years. I hope that's the right one. And we can take the opening balance times the. Okay, and the economic depreciation I'm going to wait with. We'll do that in the next uh, uh, thing. Now, the open for the return for the accumulated depreciation, we just take this. Now we'll have a little switch that later, and then we take our retirements and add those back. So this is this plus the depreciation minus the retirements, and we press Shift Control R. And then we have our net uh, uh, plant balance, which is the the opening balance of minus the opening balance of the, uh, this one. And our EBT is, well, let's first put our EBIT. And the EBIT is, is just our, we better be careful. We're going to use the opening balance of the of the uh, plant the opening balance of the number of planes times the EBITDA per plane okay so we got nothing in the first one because we made our investment and then it goes up and it it eventually stays flat and then we can take this and subtract the depreciation okay that's our kind of EBIT or and that could be since we have no taxes so our return on investment is the EBIT divided by this but I got it uh, we put uh, G7 okay let's multiply this by one shift control P control and then 
here's the weird thing and don't worry i got so i was fretting so much about this 11.4 because the uh, uh investment uh, i mean it's 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 all related to the straight line depreciation kind of thing if we put a inflation rate of uh, five percent not a inflation rate a growth rate of five percent i hope um there so now we increase the number of planes i don't care if they're a portion of planes i'm not going to get into this bizarre and irrelevant and stupid thing about a piece of a plane you know it's a big company that multiply it by a thousand if you want who gives a crap then you notice the stable ROIC goes down and if we maybe if we make the growth of planes of 12 percent then uh, it's below so uh, I wonder if we make the 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 uh, growth in the number of planes exactly the same as the rate of return uh then we get exactly 10 percent uh somebody smart could uh, prove this to me and explain uh the mathematics to me okay but uh well, maybe i'll leave that because it's kind of a nice one then once we have the return on investment then let's put some valuation now that's this is kind of what i do a lot is just to prove something as i make a ridiculous 200 year model but we can f first put our free cash flow which is is uh, just the EBITDA minus the capex so how about i think maybe let's be just a tiny bit more So let's show exactly how we get this. So EBITDA is here, our CapEx is just up from uh, up here. And our free cash flow in the first year is negative. And then we can put our NPV of the free, free cash flow. And let's use the, the uh, cost of capital. So again, I'm repeating myself here, I hope people aren't getting angry at me but the point about this uh, ultimate exercise in video is to see how all these drivers really affect the value of the company so you can understand instead of using arbitrary bullshit kind of simplistic ratios you can understand where these damn things come from and it's I find it extremely frustrating and I hate these idiots on the television who sit there and talk about valuation pe ratios as if they come from the sky or something or some magic potion or try to do some regression analysis that i've tried which doesn't work at all okay uh, and then let's put the npv of the cash flow which we'll pick npv and we'll put this one and we can press this one now when we do that if I want to copy this across, I better put a little dollar sign over here. Okay, don't worry that that's negative. Then once we have that, that's that's our enterprise value. Then we can put EV to EBITDA, and then we can put the PE ratio. Okay, which is the EBIT divided by the the value divided by the EBIT. We didn't put any uh, debt in here and then we have the uh, investment which we have the so we can put the market to book ratio okay and I think that's that's about right that's about all so the EV to EBITDA ratio is going to be our value don't worry about it being negative of course divided by this I suppose we should uh, put a little if statement again ah oh, shit okay okay and then we can uh, that's fine and we can do the same thing here but this is going to be our value divided by the uh, EBIT okay 
Okay, and the market to book ratio is uh, value divided by our, our net plant. And now we should really, if 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 we have a um, uh, if we're earning our cost of capital, uh, the market to book should be one. And what the heck did I do? Okay, well. I better put this as uh, that one. Okay. And uh, just a minute. Okay. Okay, I've got to uh, pause this because this is obviously wrong. Uh, just a minute. Okay. Uh, I just cut the growth rate down to zero. Now, uh, I think I didn't do anything wrong, actually. But what's interesting here is is kind of the P-E ratio. If you just put a portfolio, well, it starts high because we, we, we have the uh, uh, lower earnings because we, we, we used uh, straight line depreciation. And we always get a stable uh, ROE or ROIC that's greater than the cost of capital and that's because the market to book ratio that's because the the invested capital isn't exactly correct uh, and the PE comes down so you can at least this this is uh, is is I think somewhat instructive that you know if you have a capital intensive industry and you're in the beginning cycle of an investment you expect a higher P-E ratio, and in your models, you better understand that it really can come down. Uh, it's just pure, pure mathematics, pure mathematics. So uh, if, if you're in the stable period and you're just replacing your assets, you get a completely different uh, answer. Now, when I put a, a growth rate here, Let's just put a 2% growth rate, which isn't very high, you know, then I guess the phenomena is, is similar. Huh, I'm going to go ahead and put our, uh, 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 let's put a 5% growth rate, which is half the IRR. Okay, and then we, I guess, the stable ratios come out to be a little bit different okay and uh, you can see that you still have this uh, phenomena if we put a 10% uh, growth rate in which is what I was fretting about before I think we have a crazy kind of answer because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it here I'm gonna stop the video period because I'm about to miss a plane but uh, and I don't want to miss a plane because of making a video, which I think I did once. I can't figure out exactly why I missed the plane. I've been trying to take some pills that make me not so stupid, but they don't work. Uh, okay, that's enough of this video.